Good afternoon. This is Guillermo Sabatier, your host uh, for Perspectives on Energy. And today we'll be talking about uh, the second in a series of uh, NERC exam preparation. We'll be covering transmission. Hey, welcome back. And uh, again, I'm Guillermo Sabatier. I'm Director of uh, International Services for HSI. And uh, I'm also your host on tonight's episode of Perspectives on Energy. And uh, on here, we're taking the time to go over different sections. Uh, last episode, we went over a balancing and uh, that part of the exam. Today, we'll talk about a few questions regarding transmission and transmission operations. Now, some of you may know that the NERC exam, uh, usually what we cover is the RC, the Reliability Coordinator portion of the exam. So uh, usually these have a little bit of a, of a challenging problem for some of these like test takers. And a lot of cases is usually due to the fact that they may not have ever worked on the transmission system or other times we notice it's usually a problem with our understanding principles. Either way, in our uh, NERC exam prep uh, program uh, and the course and the online training as well, we usually do a pretty good job of getting test takers ready to be able to meet that challenge of a NERC exam. Um, at this time, it still has a pretty rough uh, pass rate, like uh, somewhere around 65%, but usually with uh, our program, they they score they tend to score a lot higher and have a much higher success rate when they take the exam after going through our online training and then the, um, the uh, four-day instructor-led course that we offer quarterly, I believe. Then, of course, we have a, a test prep um, Friday class every every week where we, they get everybody on, on the class, which is part of the... Uh, course paid subscription to that program. So usually they get to answer questions, go over uh, exam problems uh, every Friday for a couple of hours. So, and if you're an exam, a test taker and you're in our program, I certainly encourage you, strongly encourage you to uh, make sure you attend those Friday mentoring calls. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, first question we're going to cover today. Um, there we go. So um, one of the questions you'll see in the exam, right? And a lot of them are basically more based on scenarios rather than memorization. The reason being is that memorization uh, doesn't really challenge your your understanding and knowledge. It doesn't really test your understanding and knowledge of the actual workings of a power system. So in this case, we have something very simple. Right? We got two buses, right? And uh, one of those, you're, you're being shown a series of transmission lines connecting both of them, right? So, of course, these are both 230 kV buses, right? Uh, they got three lines. All the lines have the same impedance, right? And the question here reads that a simple power system is composed of three lines connecting generation and load. Each line has the same impedance and a thermal limit of 500 megawatts. So each line cannot exceed 500 megawatts, right? Uh, the next part is each line is initially loaded at 300 megawatts. So here they give you the components of, a, of, of the formulation of a problem, right? So the question now reads, if one line trips, what will be the loading on the shortest remaining line? So the shortest remaining line, that shortest part is the detractor, right? Because basically all the lines here have the same impedance. So for all intents and purposes, electrically, they're all the same in this case, right? So uh, in this case here, if all the lines are in service, when they are in service, right, uh, each line is loaded at 300 megawatts. That means there's three lines, 300 megawatts. That means there's a total of 900 megawatts flowing between the bus on the left to the bus on the right, right? And, and you're noticing that the generation shows you 900 megawatts down there right below which uh, says Gen 1000 MVA, well, you, they show you 900 megawatts flowing, right? Uh, so the question here is if one line trips, what will be the loading in the shortest remaining line? So now you're losing one of those options. So now you still have 900 megawatts flowing from one side to the other, Now, but now you just have fewer lines. And since the lines are all the same, you're not going to divide those 900 megawatts instead of three, you're dividing it by two which means the flow will flow equally on both of those lines, which 900 divided by 2 is 450 megawatts. And hence, that's why it, the answer in this case is delta, D, 450 megawatts. And that, that's distributed equally on both lines. Granted, this works if you have 
lines of the same impedance, right? If you got different impedances, it's a whole different animal, right? So um, let's go ahead and go to the next question. There's going to be a slightly, uh, this, this one will give you a bit of a twist, right? Very similar system, right? Same layout, but uh, you're noticing now that um, there's different impedances, right? So what happened? A simple power system is composed of three lines connecting generation to load. Each line has different impedances as shown in the diagram. So you have line one is 25 ohms, line two is 70 ohms, and line three is 30 ohms. So a lot of cases, most of these nerd exams, they're not gonna test your mathematical or arithmetical skills, right? They, they're more concerned with concepts. So they're gonna break things down rather simple. So if the question says, if line one trips, what is the loading on line three? Right, so they're being very specific about which one trips, and they're being very specific about which one is going to be you're going to be measuring. Right? So if you lose line one, that's 25 ohms, right? Uh, 25 ohms right now isn't that important. That piece of data is like, another it's another detractor in this case, right? So right now you know that you still had 900 megawatts flowing, right, from 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 left to right, from generation to load, right, on that bus. So the question is, if line one trips, what's the loading on line three? Well, in this case, you're doing a ratio, right? So 900 megawatts of that is going to be on, so dividing those 900 megawatts, uh, it's basically do, doing a 70, 30 percentage in this case. So you, you'll be grabbing, that'll be, the answer right here would be 630 megawatts, because, because of course, you're going to have a lot less impedance on line three and a lot more impedance on line two. So in this case, you're you're dividing that. And and if, if you add them up, right, for example, you're looking at 900 megawatts and then you're getting like, for example, 30 percent of that you know, in that case. And if you do the quick math on that. Right. And that will work out to that amount. Right. In other words, or 10 percent right, of. Uh, 10% of 90, for example, 900 would be 90, right? In that case, you can do it in increments, right? In that case. So remember, it just, it, it's, it's the inverse because a lot, a lot of folks make the mistake of thinking 70 ohms, 70%, and it's not the case. It's, it's, it's the inverse because the more impedance you have, the less power will flow through there, right? So you're looking at it from like a, the inverse perspective. So if you have 30 ohms, right, on that line, it's likely going to be, 70% of the flow will go through line three, and 30% of the flow will go through line two. Hence, you do the math, and you are doing breaking this down proportionately based on the impedances. So again, the answer here once it is C, 630 megawatts will be flowing on line three. So a 230 to 115 kV transformer is rated at 100 MBA and has 80 megawatts entering the primary side. Again, another tricky trick question here, right? So what would you expect the real power output to be on a secondary side? So here's an important thing to consider, right? On a transformer, power in equals power out, right? So you gotta remember, uh, what does a transformer do? It, it steps voltage up or down. So if a transformer is stepping down voltage from 230 to 115, it, it is, by property, it is stepping up current on the other side, right? So say it has, for example, 100 amps on, on the primary side, and don't quote me on the numbers that won't add up, it's just an example of, of proportions. So if it's cutting it down by half, if it's 100, mega, 100 amps on the primary side, then it'll be like 200 mega, uh, amps on the low side, right? So the point is, when you do those calculations, power in always equals power out, right? So remember, if voltage doubles, current is cut in half. So that proportion holds true. So in this case, if you got 80 megawatts on one side of real power, you're going to have 80 megawatts on a real side of the other power. So, and that's, in this case, for example, when they ask you that, what would you expect their real power output to be in the secondary side, right? So they're saying 80 megawatts entering the primary side, you're going to have 80 megawatts going on the other side. Granted, you're not accounting for losses. In some cases, you have very minimal losses in these transforms, but in this case, they're neglecting that. So that's another important thing to remember, right? And why do why are why is voltage oftentimes from a plant, for example, stepped up, right? Well, ideally, it's uh, the higher the voltage, 
if you're carrying the same amount of megawatts, the thinner the line can be. So you don't have to have such a thick conductor, especially out there in a high voltage transmission system. So that's another advantage, right, of, of stepping up voltages. There's several others that it's also also easier to control voltage, easier to support power transfers with certain voltage levels over others. But one thing to always remember is that the uh, transformer ratios, when you have a step up or a step down, power in always equals power out. Okay, let's do the next question. Radio transmission line. All right. So a radio transmission line feeding a load is overloaded. The transmission operator must do which of the following to unload the line. So when they say the, the key word here is radio, and radio means you've got only one way in or one way out. It, it's it's you got source on one side, load on the other, and it's not interconnected. So mean, meaning that it's only being fed from one end. Problem with this is that there's nothing you can do. There's no generation on the other side. There's no redispatch. There's there's nothing you can do in this case. If you try and lower the out, lower the uh, the amount of power coming in you're still going to have, cause other problems because you're going to depress voltage. So here, the only solution here really is to shed load at the end of the line, which usually when something is radially fed, that is usually the only solution. Unless you have generation that can be started and brought online at that radial end. Uh, other than that, there's no other solution, right? Uh, lower the voltage to the receiving end, that will help you at all. In fact, that, that'll probably like, bring about a collapse, right? Raise voltage at the receiving end, uh, you that has very limited effect and, and really won't do much because the load is real and the, and the load's still there, right? Raising voltage at the ascending end is the same problem, right? You're you might actually aggravate such things because now you're going to send bars over to, to the load. So, again, shedding load at the end of the line is it's the only solution in this case, right? Okay, now we have uh, one more question to go through, I think. All right. So question 24, well, well I, again, there were like 100 questions. I, I just picked four. Again, in our program, you get exposure to many more of these, and there are test questions. And the other thing always is that we really discourage people from memorizing test questions. What we do instead is we encourage you to understand what the concepts are. So in this case, a system operator identifies a transmission line that is operating at a 100% of a system operating limit. What should be done? So in this case, in most cases, um, you're already at the limit. You haven't gone over the limit. You're at the limit in, in this case, right? So here you're making assumptions, right? Do you, you want to immediately reduce loading? Well, how would you do that? Would you shed load? So you haven't really damaged the line. You haven't overloaded the line. You're just at the line's limit. Now, if you have something else happen, you may very easily overload this line or cause problems. But right now, nothing is nothing unless something changes in the wrong direction nothing is really happening right in this case you don't want to be there and most utilities don't want you to be there right uh, so for the most part when a line is operating 100 percent of system operating limit right you will monitor that in this case right and be ready to take action a lot of those can involve redispatch it could be involved shedding load it could involve uh, uh sectionizing a line right um opening the line will probably be the worst thing you could do because now you you will be in, in effect causing potentially a cascade right in this case so that's another example of something you don't want to be doing so um and an important thing to understand right system operating limit means you're at 100 percent. once you go to 101 now you're 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 officially violating that 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 hard limit on that line some places have a short-term and a long-term um uh, emergency ratings those vary now again this is probably post contingency this is already happening in real time right if you have a pre contingency event meaning that if you lose a certain element you'll be at 100% or more then that's a pre contingency event it hasn't happened yet but you need to be really ready to take action you know right away if it happens in this case you know, something may have already happened where you're at 100% right on that edge and you haven't gone over it, that yet. If you were at one hundred one percent, then you would actually be, need to take some action at that point. Right? All right. Uh, it looks like these are all the questions we have for today. I, I definitely encourage you to go go ahead and visit our website for more information, hsi.com. Um, in this case, we will go ahead and uh, 
in a few weeks from now, probably go do a, another section and a few more questions. But then again, I definitely encourage you to go ahead and go to, to hsi.com and look for NERC test prep, NERC exam preparation. And uh, there's a lot of resources there that can that we can uh, provide you to actually go ahead and do better on your exam. So um, once again, uh, thank you for joining us in this case. Again, th this is a short uh, five, five question, um, I guess, uh, refresher on what to expect or an intro. But again, there's a lot more available at hsi.com in our NERC exam prep program. So, all right, thank you very much and have a lovely afternoon and evening. So, and good luck in your exam. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.